This video is brought to you by the Edinburgh Watch Company, who specialise in the buying and selling of fine Swiss luxury watches in the beautiful city of Edinburgh and online at edinburghwatchcompany.co.uk. Hello and welcome back to the Watch Guys. What we have this week are two examples of a new disruptive watch company that's been making waves in the industry. This week we're talking about Eventi. This blue sapphire skeletonized tourbillon is less than $10,000 and this burnt titanium skeletonized tourbillon is less than $2,000. How is that possible? Let's find out, shall we? That's right, folks. I bet you didn't expect that. This week, I actually have watches that I do not personally own. I thought I'd tell you a little bit about Aventi because it's a company that I've become aware of mainly because they're fans of this channel and they reached out and said, would you like to have a look at a couple of our watches? Its first watch, the A10, was funded initially by an Indiegogo campaign. The Eventi concept is to deliver all the functionality and innovation of some of the highest end names in the business, but for a fraction of the price, and in the process, shake up the whole industry. So the more I heard about these guys, the more I wanted to find out more. So I actually met up with Ryan from Eventi on a recent car trip that I had with the carguys.tv. To be honest, that's the first time that I've ever actually held them in my hand. And also I really like the disruptive nature of the company. It's great when you get young companies coming into an established industry and shake things up a bit. After all, that's what Richard Mille did and there are many other independent watchmakers at the moment doing exactly the same thing. So this week, what I'm gonna do is take you through my first impressions really of these watches now that I've had a bit of time to play with them. I've got the two here, I've got the Royal Blue Sapphire and I've got this, which is the latest A10 titanium. The big difference is that the case on this is made from burnt titanium. So it's this incredible oxidized effect that you get when you rev titanium car exhausts to really hot temperatures like you do on the track. And they turn this beautiful purple oxidized color. So we're gonna be talking about these two watches this week. I do not own either of them, nor am I being paid by Eventi for doing this. I know that they've been doing a lot of activity with various other channels, but in this case, I'm doing this because I'm interested in understanding about the technology and I'm interested in understanding a bit more about these watches. So I haven't bought any yet, but by the end of the episode, who knows? Before we get started, a quick wristwatch check and under the blue jumper this week, I have a Rolex GMT Master II on a Jubilee strap, otherwise known as the Pepsi. This is reference 126710BLRO. It doesn't really need any introduction because it's one of the most popular stainless steel Rolexes that you can buy today. It's one of the ones that everyone wants. I've waited a couple of years for it, but finally I've got it. So why on earth am I talking about two watches that I don't actually own? Given that the channel pretty much talks exclusively about my watch collection. It's true to say that I've never found such a divisive watch. This is a real Marmite moment. People either get it and love the idea of these things or they're absolutely perplexed by them. They cannot understand why you would wear something so large and in some of the bright coloured variants so garish as one of these watches. But of course there are many watches around that occupy this segment, most notably Richard Mille for example, who doesn't seem to have done too bad from creating large garish watches. Marketed as a supercar for your wrist, which I find a little bit too much marketing bunkum for me, the outsized A10s can be had in various different bright colours. This new burnt titanium is merely the latest model, and these retail for $2,000. That's £1,500 for a titanium tourbillon watch. I just find that incredible. This sapphire cased tourbillon can be had for less than $10,000. That's just insane value. This burnt titanium is the latest in the A10s, which is very much the entry level Aventi. This one's created using a special high temperature open flame technique, which of course means that actually no two are the same because if you heat up titanium to various temperatures, the coloring that you get on them is always 
different, but it does take on the hue of a well-used race exhaust. So for example, this is the exhaust on my McLaren 675LT after some heavy track work. See what I mean? That's the effect you get, and that's the effect you get on this A10 burnt titanium. Aventi then Cerakote the uh, case so that it becomes more resistant to scratches and dings, because of course titanium can scratch quite easily, particularly when burnt this way. Probably not necessarily for my personal tastes, I'm not sure I would go for the burnt titanium, but I do appreciate the fact that it's a bit more motorsport and a bit more out there than some of the standard titanium models. Now, although I'm a big fan of Super Luminova, and both these Aventis have got Super Luminova on the dial itself to help pick out the hour markers, on the titanium models, you also get this dreamline of Super Luminova on the case itself on the front. Now, for me, that is a bit of a deal breaker because it makes too much of a feature of something that really should be only seen at night. I think it fundamentally changes the design and the aesthetic of the titanium models for the worse, and to me it evokes a look of the awning of an ice cream parlour, which I'm not sure is the look they should be going for. Especially on this burnt titanium model, I would much rather there be no white dreamlines at all so that I can really enjoy that burnt titanium effect all over the front of the watch as well as the sides and back. But my pick of the range is this royal blue sapphire. Now, obviously it's blue and I'm a boy, so I have an innate interest in blue watches. But when I saw this watch, this was the one that stood out for me. We're talking about a full blue sapphire case and blue silicon strap. And I just think that that combined with the black skeletonized workings, uh, the gold areas of the tourbillon movement itself, to me, this is one of the most subtle and, dare I say it, most classy of the Aventi range. So as soon as I saw this one, this was the one that I was interested the most. Typical though, it is the most expensive at just under $10,000. Now because it's made entirely of sapphire crystal, it's obviously pretty resistant to bangs and dings, which works well for me because I'm always hitting my watches against solid objects like car doors and door frames. It's got anti-reflective coating on it, so even though there's a large slab of glass there, um, it's actually quite easy to read in sunny conditions. Now, first of all, there's no getting away from the sheer physical size of these things. And as you can see there, it is enormous. It measures 55.5 millimeters by 48.5 millimeters, and it wears pretty much like a 46, 47 millimeter watch. So it is big, huge, gargantuan, but this is not what I would call an everyday watch. This to me is an event watch. It's something that you wear for a party or for a special event. And in which case it delivers the sheer visual impact that you're probably looking for, particularly this blue sapphire. When you see the way the light bounces off of all those facets of the sapphire crystal, it really is a hell of a thing. It's also very light because of the titanium components. It comes on a silicon strap. And of course, the sapphire crystal itself is pretty light as well. So when you're wearing it, you wouldn't believe how comfortable it is to wear such a massive watch. So it's pretty tall on the wrist, but because it's made of such hard wearing materials, fortunately it's gonna be quite well protected. The silicon strap, whilst lightweight, is a bit cheap in feel, so it does let it down a little bit. The crown is found at the 12 o'clock position. Um, that's obviously quite useful because for such a large watch, you don't want it digging into your wrist when you flex it. I find the crown on both these watches to be quite cheap feeling and a little imprecise, which is a bit of a shame, but I'm told they are upgrading those for the full production models. And what we've got here is the combination of sapphire crystal and an encased tourbillon movement, which is something that you find usually in only the most expensive versions of luxury watches. But here's the kicker, and here's the reason why Aventi is able to deliver these watches for such a cost-effective price. This accurate tourbillon movement is from China, specifically from PTS Resources in Hong Kong. Now I know you're a bit put off by that, aren't you? Yeah, I can see it in your eyes. Any mention of a Chinese movement compared to a Swiss one will normally turn collectors right off, but hear me out. 
First of all, it might not be as beautifully finished as some of the high-end Swiss brands, but it works perfectly, it's accurate, and it looks identical to other tourbillon movements. But remember, this costs five to ten times less than the equivalent movement in a Swiss tourbillon watch. And that's not even taking into account the full sapphire case, which would almost certainly be a lot more. So you have to remember that the Aventi is essentially giving you that Hublot, that Richard Mille experience for a fraction of the price. If you wanted to buy this from one of the traditional Swiss watch brands, it would almost certainly cost you well over £100,000. I know that therefore watch snobs are going to immediately write off Eventi for the use of the Chinese movement, but that's how they're able to disrupt the industry. And if you are wearing something like this, a real statement, a real event watch, are you really going to care that much that the accurate tourbillon movement inside the heart of this watch that's powering it in just the same way as those more expensive ones, are you really going to care? Or are you going to be thinking about what you can spend all that money that you saved on? And without wishing to break any confidences, Eventi are currently working on a Swiss movement version of its watches and also smaller cases for a more mass market audience. So even though you might find these large cases to be a bit off-putting and maybe you're a bit off-put by the movement, things are going to change. And yet you're still going to be getting them for a price that is far less than other major watch brands. So for me, the Royal Blue Sapphire is the real sweet spot. It's the best combination of all the things that Aventi has done really, really well. And it combines to create a luxurious looking but cost effective watch that actually I wouldn't mind wearing at all. Do I wish that this had a Swiss movement in it? Not really. I don't begrudge the fact with this that these guys are trying something different and they're trying something different at an affordable level. I don't own a Turbion in the Watch Guys collection mainly because of the exorbitant price of them. I love the look at them. I've always think they're brilliant. There's a fantastic Vacheron Constantin which I think is superb but I'm not going to pay that sort of money for that watch. So Aventi is offering that Turbion feeling for a lot less cash and that seems like a pretty good deal I have to say. Who would wear a watch like this? Well, I don't think it's all rappers and playboys, but they are most definitely event watches. There's something that you wear for a special event or to make a statement. You want to make an entrance when you wear one of these. You wear this at a party. You wear this getting out of a flash car in Palm Beach or Los Angeles. You wear it when you want to stand out at a casino, at a race meeting, at a fashion show. It's that sort of thing. And in that sense, it does the job really well. So there you go, those are my first impressions of the Aventi A11 and the A10 Burnt Titanium. I think on balance it's the A11 Royal Sapphire that I like the most, but you can't deny the visual shock and awe that these two deliver. They are something different, they are something enormous, but they work and the price is frankly unbelievable. Thanks for watching this episode on Eventi, a new disruptive watch company that I think is worth paying attention to. If you like what I'm doing on The Watch Guys, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. I read them all and I reply to many of them. There will be another Watch Guys episode next week.